Hi, my name is Edwin Abrahamian. I'm a mechanical engineer with Ceratech, and welcome to our Tips and Tricks tutorial series. Today we'll be talking about remembered constraints in assemblies, along with a, the reuse library, and also a little bit about part families. So I want to draw your attention to the model I have. I'll be working with a needle roller bearing model along with a shaft assembly. And I'll be bringing in my needle roller into my assembly, basically. So the purpose of remembered constraints is basically to simplify constraining parts within assemblies for the end user. Basically, NX will remember which faces or features you like to use to constrain your component. When you bring it into your assembly, all you have to do is select the mating feature. So within this particular part, I utilize layers and I have two planes that sit on layer 31. And these planes are basically tangent and parallel. So tangent to the rollers and parallel to the XY plane. So I want to use these two faces to basically butt it up against the end of the uh, against the shoulder of the bore or shaft. In addition, I have a reference set created, and this reference set basically contains those components. So it has my model and it has my datums in there. So let's go ahead and bring in my part into my assembly. So assembly add. I already have the part loaded, so I can just select my bearing. Now this is my little tidbit about part families. Basically, that bearing is a parent part, and there are multiple configurations or parts that reside in it. So basically, uh, the size of that bearing will change depending on the different expressions or parts that we baked into it. Um, so in this case, we have four different members that are within that family of bearings. But we want to manipulate the template, so we'll go ahead and do that. Now you'll notice I have my preview window on the bottom right here. And my reference set is set to constraint datum. If it was model, we couldn't see our planes. So we have constraint datum. So now what we want to do is we want to basically go ahead and do an align lock and grab the axis here and align it to our axis of our shaft. In addition, we want to do a touch constraint and just grab that plane and then we'll grab the end of the shoulder. And that should be good enough to constrain our bearing. So now if we go into our um, assembly navigator, you'll see that is fully constrained. So the next step here is to actually use our remembered constraints. So we'll select our component. We want to remember the constraints for our bearing and then we'll select our two constraints. So if we jump back to our model here, you will notice that we have two remembered constraints, some of the constraints within our part file. So we have our line lock and our touch. So now we want to go ahead and save this part. Okay, so after we have saved the part, we're basically locking in those two remembered constraints to the component. So now we can jump back to our assembly here and we can actually delete this for testing purposes to actually show the effectivity of the remembered constraints. We'll remove the current part in here and we'll jump to our reuse library actually and we'll go ahead and add a new library. So library management, add a library, I'm going to add this folder called um, NX Creating Remember Constraints. And then within this folder, we basically have two components. Actually, the test shaft is in my library, but we have the bearing here. And I'm just going to simply drag and drop this bearing onto my bore. And if you remember the family of parts that I was talking about earlier, basically it's sized my bearing as I wanted based on a carex file I created. Um, and now with the constraints, I can have basically my placement here, use inferred constraints. So you can see it or it already knows to create my align lock. 
but my positioning here will be by constraints. I have my constraint datum set as my reference set. So if I click OK here, now the power of the member constraints is one constraint is already set because of my drag and drop using my reuse library. But also, all I have to do now is just select the face that I want to constrain to and the plane. Actually, I want to do a preview here. And you'll notice now that my part is fully constrained. So essentially, the goal here is to simplify the process to constrain your components and to basically bake in those remembered constraints into your piece parts. So when you bring it into your assembly, all you have to really do is in some cases it'll remember based on how you bring in your part, it'll remember what those um, constraints would be. In other cases, you have to define what that mating surface is gonna be because it's already remembered on your piece component. So thank you for watching our video. Again, this is Edwin with Saratech. And if you have any comments or questions, please be sure to add those comments below. In addition, um, please subscribe to our channel. We have a bunch of videos and tips and tricks videos on the channel. And have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks for checking out our channel. If you like what you saw, make sure to like and subscribe down below so you don't miss out on any new videos. Follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter for the latest engineering news and information. And to see all of our upcoming events, please visit our website at saratech.com events.